now we are going to see the theories of failure and their application there are number of machine components which are subjected to several types of load simultaneously up till now we have seen that the component is subjected the load in only one direction but in real life application it is not possible because there are more than two three types of load which we are applying on the component the design of such machine parts subjected to the combined loads should be related to the experimentally determined properties of the material under the similar condition means which we have carried out up till now that simple tension test so the theories of elastic failure it provides a relationship between strength of the machine component subjected to complex state of the stress with the mechanical properties which obtained in the simple tension test with the help of these theories the data obtained in the tension test can be used to determine the dimension of the component irrespective of the nature of stresses induced in the component due to the complex load now there are different theories of failure but the five major theories which we generally use these are one maximum principal stress theory which we can call it as a rankine theory second maximum shear stress theory that is also called coulomb or guest stress ka theory third distortion energy theory which we can call one mises or henke's theory fourth one the maximum strain theory that is also called the sent venant theory and the fifth one maximum total strain energy theory that we can call the hay theory out of that the first one we will see the maximum principal stress theory that is the rankine theory this theory mostly we are using for the brittle material the criteria of failure is accredited to the british engineer that is wjm rankine that is in 1850 so what this theory states the theory states that the failure of the mechanical component subjected to biaxial or triaxial stresses occurs when the maximum principal stress reaches the yield or ultimate strength of the material now this is what the 2d diagram that is in x and in y direction that is the two axial stresses and this is the triaxial that is in x direction y direction and in z direction so this is what the biaxial and the triaxial stresses condition now maximum as already i said that the maximum principal stress theory is useful for the brittle material now sigma 1 sigma 2 and the sigma 3 these are the three stresses in x y and z direction so here we are considering one condition that sigma 1 is greater than the sigma 2 and sigma 2 is greater than the sigma 3 now <coughs> now suppose the sigma 1 is greater than the sigma 2 as per this theory we will consider only the maximum of principal stress now here the sigma 1 and sigma 2 these are the principal stresses suppose sigma 1 is a tensile stress and the limitative value of the sigma 1 is its maximum yield strength that is the syt therefore the boundary line for this is sigma 1 is equal to syt a vertical line ab is constructed such that sigma 1 is equal to positive syt that is the tensile stress Now similarly if stress is compressive 
the again the limiting value of the sigma 1 will be minus SYC that is in compressive. So a vertical line CD is constructed in such a way that the sigma 1 is equal to minus SYC. Now for the second case when this sigma 2 is greater than the sigma 1. So again when there is a tensile load at that time the sigma 2 will be positive value. So we will construct a AC line and if the sigma 2 is the negative that is the compressive in nature then we will construct a BD line. Now here you got one complete rectangle that is A, B, C, D. According to this maximum principal stress theory of failure, if a point with coordinate sigma 1 and sigma 2 falls outside this square, then it indicates that the failure condition. On the other hand, if point falls inside this square, the design is safe and the failure it will not occur. Experimental investigation suggests that the maximum principal stress theory gives good prediction for the brittle material. However, it is not recommended for the ductile material. Now second theory, maximum shear stress theory or that is coulomb tresca guest theory. This theory we are going to use for the ductile material. The criteria of the failure is accredited by the coulomb H tresca or JJ guest. So that's why it is called coulomb tresca guest theory. What this theory state? The theory states that the failure of the mechanical component subjected to biaxial or triaxial stress occurs when the maximum shear stress at any point in the component becomes equal to the maximum shear stress in the standard specimen of a tension test when the yielding starts. Now this is again the stress condition and if you plot the Mohr circle that is sigma 1 maximum stress sigma 2 in y direction no any stress so therefore it is 0 and here we constructed the Mohr circle. So from this figure this is the tau max. So tau max it is sigma 1 by 2 because this sigma 1 it indicates diameter of the circle and the tau max it is the radius so that is sigma 1 by 2 so that is SYT by 2. So therefore tau max is equal to it is 0.5 times the SYT. Suppose sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 are the three principal stress at a point on a component and the shear stresses on three different planes are given by tau 1 2 is equal to sigma 1 by minus sigma 2 by 2. Similarly, tau 2 3 is equal to sigma 2 minus sigma 3 by 2 and tau 3 1 is equal to sigma 3 minus sigma 1 by 2. The largest of these stresses is equated to the tau max. So, considering this tau max what it is that is SYT divided by 2 that is yield strength divided by the 2 that is the shear stress maximum. Now we are equating this sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2 is equal to SYT by 2 then we will get this 2 and this 2 it will get cancelled and you will get the equation sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to SYT this is again plus minus that is considering tensile and compressive. Similarly, we will get the equations for this equating to this sigma 2 minus sigma 3 is equal to plus minus SYT, sigma 3 minus sigma 1 is equal to plus minus SYT. 
so for the biaxial stresses means only in two direction so as sigma 3 in the third direction stress so this sigma 3 it will be zero so then you will get the equation sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to plus minus syt and as sigma 3 is 0 then sigma 2 is equal to plus minus syt and sigma 3 is equal to 0 then sigma 1 is equal to plus minus syt by considering this three equation so you will get this graph so again this a b c d e f this is what the region of safety so if the stress which we have calculated if it is falling inside this region then we can say it is a safe that particular design if it is falling outside this region then we can say it is not safe design